Hello everyone, Helen Yu here at IBM Think. Uh, I'm so pleased to be here hosting uh, Madhu Kocher, who is the VP of product for automation, IBM software. Hi Madhu, such a pleasure meeting you. Thank you, Helen. I really enjoyed your keynote speech yesterday. It talks about AI automation in a hybrid world and what's the rush. So I'd like to unpack that a little bit more with you. But we've, before we do that, could you introduce yourself and uh, share your role at IBM a little bit? Yeah, sure, as you introduced my title. So I'm responsible for the products strategy for the IBM automation software business. That's wonderful. So let's start with the big picture, right? Uh, there has been an urgency of rushing to AI adoption, and it could lead to mis missteps, especially in the hybrid uh, world. Uh, from your vintage point, what are the challenges are you seeing? And um, you know, how is I IBM helping organizations to uh, move forward with clarity and confidence? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So if we go back a year, for example, right at this thing, we were all still we were talking about AI but everybody was in a very much of an experimentation mode, right? It was more about, hey, can I build a simple Q&A chatbot, right? That was a big deal. We called mm -hmm. it assistance. Um, then we moved up to, hey, we can do a lot more with it, like rag patterns, can can I give something? And it can summarize more like a co-pilot helping me mm -hmm. out on this, right? Um, now, this year, moving on, as you heard from Arvind, the keynote, mm -hmm. and Rob's keynote, that, look, we are way beyond those experimentation mode. Clients are seeing the value of how AI, generative AI, can actually get to the highest curve of automation, mm -hmm. right? And this is about uh, process, uh, business process automations. Those type of technologies existed before, like RPAs and such, but mm -hmm. they were very much still very static now. It's about, you know, how do I really, you know, automate the workflows? How do I make my developers productive? How do we make our businesses a lot more productive, right? It's, now it's real life examples and real life, you know, uh, benefits which we're starting to do. Yeah, you know, what really stood out yesterday was that 90, among the 98% people or company adopting AI, only 25% fully uh, realize or achieve the ROIs, right? Yeah. And so yeah. there's a big, really, gap between the adoption and uh, the ROIs. So that AI value curve really uh, resonate with me. However, today's environment, IT is getting more complex, right, with AI, with APIs, yes. and with data everywhere. Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, 99% of enterprise data are not even with AI. Yes. So yeah. how is IBM helping these organizations to simplify and stay agile in such a complex world? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So f yesterday, as I was showing, there was this one screen which is so visible in front of me, you know, when I talk about this massive sprawl which is mm -hmm. happening, right? APIs are everywhere, uh, app uh, integration, endpoints, data, events. We're just surrounded by all those things. And on top of it, the complexity is because now the world is truly hybrid. Right? Yeah. You know, you've got your applications running on edge. They are on-premise behind clients' uh, firewalls and on multi-cloud. Imagine, and then you, you heard Rob saying, project one billion new applications like in another three, three years, right? right? Yeah. And these applications could be very different in nature, built by AI. Yeah. So, you know, the complexity is just going to skyrocket. So there are multiple things uh, where we are obviously helping. Number one is every, all the initiatives you have heard about uh, us building AI agents, providing out-of-the-box agents. That has been a big thing. Um, you heard about what we are talking about, the integration space, especially which I announced with our uh, web methods hybrid integration. And interesting part, Helen, is that integration for the longest time was 
mainly a background conversations oh, for yeah. a while. Yeah. Now it has become boardroom discussions. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because of this chaos of connectivity out there and how do we simplify it, right? Yeah. So there's a lot of in innovative work going on there as well. And the most important part is we IBM deal with enterprise customers, right? We're not consumer to consumer. Mm -hmm. Enterprises will not put anything into production if they can't trust it, if they can't secure it, right? Like mm -hmm. all the work which we are doing around security surrounds it all, right? Like getting it really truly AI, AI agents, production ready, you require enterprise grade level. I can so. relate to that, you know, start my career as a solution architect and then now sitting in the boardroom. So that's being said, complexity really comes down to integration, simplifying integration. Yeah. You know, having been working with the CTOs, CIOs for digital transformation, I still see the company struggle, right, with the outdated system and then manual processes, they actually have a lot of human APIs to connect their <laughs> systems today, right? Yes, yes. So how is it. IBM helping these organizations to simplify or you know make integration faster and yeah. more in real time? Yeah, no, you, you really said it really well, human APIs. Yeah. And then also all the integrations which were built in the past were very point to point, right? It becomes mm -hmm. very rigid, very batch oriented. World we live in is all real time. So let me unpack what I announced yesterday around the web methods yeah. hybrid integration to answer your question how it will help the clients. Um, there are two key things I will highlight. One capability is what we call a hybrid control plane. Mm -hmm. Why is that important? because you know this based on your background now, you know all the enterprises, systems, rec, you know, the systems of record of data, databases, mm -hmm. applications. Nobody is going to go and say, hey, redo all this, yeah. right? That's not gonna get touched. New systems could be added. Yeah. Um, so first it's very important to understand, do I even have, do I even have an understanding or what type of APIs or integration flows, which of my apps are talking to each other or mm -hmm. even partner apps, right? B2B apps. Oh, yeah. um, so getting clarity of that is important before you can even start to figure out what do I want to do next mm -hmm. with them. So the, with the hybrid control plane, one way to explain is that it gives the IT team a single pane of glass mm -hmm. to get full visibility and control of their operational model, meaning A, they can see where their integrations are. It doesn't matter what gateways they go through. It doesn't matter what environment, environment meaning is it on the edge, is it on-prem or mm -hmm. multi-cloud. And the most important other part is all locations. Now the, 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 you know, the, the work is, the business is happening around the world. world is very small, right? So understanding what geographies I'm running in, mm -hmm. they get to get that clarity. Number two, in order for you to make any improvements, because our mindset always is, if nothing's broken, let's not touch it, right? Yeah. But it can also give you that real-time assessment of where things could be going wrong. And then on top of it, to take an action, can I go quickly fix it? That opens up to say, look, do I need to go modernize? Mm -hmm. That goes back to your applications. Can applications be modernized? How can it be done? Do we? And there are a lot of tools now available, oh, yeah. thanks to Gen AI, to do a lot of those modernizations as no, well. That's a huge relief, right? And the biggest fear of CTOs and CIOs I work with today is that they have a lot of legacy systems, especially manufacturers or financial right. services or insurance companies and the, the thought of getting rid of all the legacy systems have to balance that with modern cloud yes. is really a scary. Yes, right? yes. That's being said, yeah. how is IBM helping them to move forward, take that leap of faith without starting from scratch? Right, so in this case, first understanding, control, what needs to get fixed, right? So there's the tools available. Uh, the, I talked, the second big important part to answer your question is introducing agentic AI within the product, mm -hmm. right? This can actually very quickly um, help with some of those mundane tasks, right? You mm -hmm. understand, like, let me give you an example. Yesterday, I gave an example of a, a luxury retailer, yeah. right? 
a marketeer has to start a, a sales campaign or something, in order to put that simple request to operationalize it, mm -hmm. they have to go back and maybe span seven to eight different systems, right? Very specialized skills because some of the data is in databases, certain applications to even understand all this, then able to pull the whole workflow, the process together, then de not just build it, run it, deploy, monitor, right? It takes time, months and months. Oh, yeah. Now with the Gentic AI, that is how we can quickly help because we can then build integration agents because we understand what process, what workflows are needed. We understand the data. You can get smarter. Yeah. All that time, which perhaps took months, can be now done in weeks to days, right? You know, I, I, just, I was at uh, the forum earlier. I was able to build an AI agent using Watson X within five minutes. Oh, wow. I'm very impressed yes. with yeah. what you've already have today. I learned there are 159 pre-built agents yes. out there already, so congrats for yeah, making that yeah, happen. Yeah, no, we we're very excited yeah. about that technology yeah. and, you know, real usage oh, and yeah. real outcomes yeah. you'll see. Let's talk about how AI fits in, right? We all know AI has changed integration, how integration works. How is IBM making, you know, lever make AI or leveraging AI to make integration faster and then respond in real time? Yeah, so that kind of goes back to us building like integration agents where we mm -hmm. understand what the backend systems require, how to build the workflows very quickly and be able to, you know, um, a concrete example is a lo very large um, uh, healthcare uh, client of ours. It, today to build a integration flow to get mm -hmm. any outcomes takes them about 200 hours. Wow. Now, with the power of the agents which we are bringing in, it can be done within an hour. Wow. That's a big outcome, right? That's massive. And yeah. the second important value of that is somebody doesn't have to be that technical to start building these new applications mm -hmm. and getting them um, ready. So sometimes I joke, like these days you can think about, uh, I have an idea for an application on a Monday and can you be production ready APIs by Tuesday, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's fast how the businesses are moving. It's fascinating, right, to see how we have evolved from where we were, the time I built everything manually <laughs> as a solution architect, to you can just build things instantly. Yes. Right? With things moving so fast today, uh, you know, whether it is customer demand or internal disruption, companies need to respond instantly. Yeah. So how is IBM helping these organizations to really gain real-time insights and then respond, uh, in, you know, respond really fast? Yeah, so those things are come in different answers, right, in mm -hmm. terms of how I can immediately, quickly build APIs mm -hmm. before it used to take long time. So we have products uh, which can really optimize the whole API lifecycle management. Mm -hmm. um, I talked about the integration flows. You saw what we are doing with our built-in agents, yeah. like I have to connect one application to another. We're ready to go out of the box, we can do it. So these are the responses which clients will see in their own businesses, mm -hmm. right? So for example, uh, you have a workflow order, right? Yeah. Something went wrong. Uh, let's take the, the, the biggest example out there, you know, the bridges, you got to maintain all those bridges and a work order needs to get put in place. It could be a very immediate thing to go respond to. It can still take weeks and months to do it. But now the quick response time is, Thanks to what we have done with the generative AI and agents in our products, we can very quickly respond. Um, the clients can use those products to get quick responses mm -hmm. from, from their businesses. That's really uh, profound. Can you share a story? I mean, Rob actually talked about AI value curve yesterday. He showed the experimentation to RAG, to automation. Automation is the icing on the cake there. Can you share a customer story that uh, they, they really leverage uh, IBM automation tools to really gain uh, the benefit of unlocking enterprise value? Yeah, multiple examples there. Um, 
one example which I just actually talked about, the healthcare, the where they yeah. can go from yeah. um, building a integration flow from 200 hours to an hour. Mm -hmm. Talk about the luxury retailer. Yeah. Um, they've been able to use our integration products where they actually are able to realize the, that they saw 40% reduction in their downtime. Mm. Wow. I mean, downtime costs money. That's oh, a yeah. reputation also for the clients, yeah. right? So they're able to get that. So those are like real life examples. Our observability solutions in automation has generative AI built in. And that means instead of always being in a reactive mode, you can get to proactive. Again, these are a lot of gains for our clients. That's very, that's priceless, right? And 40% downtime yeah. is a lot. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I said yesterday. Like, who wouldn't want that type <laughs> of a solution, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, so let's wrap up with a look ahead, right? What do you think will be happen with AI hybrid cloud in the next few years? And then how is IBM preparing for what's coming? Yeah, I mean, I wish I had a crystal ball, but I do think uh, what Arvind said long time ago when people were not clear if we are right, I think hybrid is going to stay. Mm -hmm. Because more and more with the regulations and the geopolitical issues, we are finding that clients are going to be very selective what goes on cloud, what stays on premise. So I think hybrid is here to stay. I think, uh, I personally think what you saw in this thing conference around agents. Mm -hmm. I think agents are gonna leapfrog. Mm -hmm. um, I think the technologies around MCP are here. We will see a lot of disruption in how software gets done. We are already talking about how do we make our developers, our software um, at itself a lot more productive. So I think um, we will start to see lots and lots of benefits of AI go forward. Yeah, I would really echo that. I think 2025 is going to be a year of the agentic AI. Yeah. And uh, congratulations on making such a big leap leading the industry. And uh, thank you so much yeah, for thank you, having Helen. a conversation with me today. Yeah, thank you, Helen, for your time.